What's up everyone? My name's Darcy, Senior Speech Pathologist and Team Leader at Maitland ORS and I'm here with... Sophie Ganano, Speech Pathologist, his subordinate. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're here to bust some myths in regards to speech pathology in celebration of Spa Week. So, shall we jump into it? Let's go for it. Oh, hi. Our first myth, speech pathology is just about talking. Couldn't be further from the truth. Well, <laughs> Speech pathology, while well, we do work on all aspects of talking, so the language, the way our words sound, we also work on the context that language and talking is in. So that involves cognitive communication, pragmatics, which is our social communication, and we also work on nonverbal communication, so all the sort of signs that our body gives off. We also work on voice disorders, and we also work on swallowing as well. Yes. So that myth, consider it busted. <laughs> Sophie. Yes. Speech pathology is just play. Yeah. No, it's not. So we do have a range of play-based activities, which we include in our therapy, aims to promote speech and these language skills, particularly for these early intervention ages, little kids, toddlers even in uh, primary school ages. It's great at eliciting new words, teaching turn-taking, sharing, cause and effect as well, and that joint attention skill. So simple, guided, structured activities are all key to helping kids explore the world, develop their language, and improve their foundational language skills. Lovely, so this myth? Busted. <laughs> Mm. Darcy, mm. eye contact is a prerequisite for listening. Well, eye contact is an effective way to show your communication partner that you're paying attention and listening to what they're saying. This is not the only way that we show that we're listening. So we can demonstrate this through open body language, facing the other person and not interrupting them while also nodding your head. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that myth Get it out of here. I don't want to see it. If a child mixes languages in the same sentence, it means they are confused and struggling with being bilingual. Mm, no. So many children who are bilingual may speak phrases or sentences where they switch between languages. Mm -hmm. This is what we call code switching. So while switching between languages may make it seem as though the child is confused, code switching is actually a normal part of bilingual language development. Wow. Yeah. So this myth, what do we think? Yeah, get rid of it. No? Be gone. Be gone? Out of my sight. Social language support is only for kids with autism. So, it can be harder um, for those who aren't born um, as neurotypical mm. to develop social language skills, which translates into shared play, uh, building upon friendships, turn-taking, stuff like that. Mm. Social language support can also be for those who have suffered uh, a stroke or may have a degenerative disorder such as dementia oh, yeah. um, because essentially what we want to look at is how we use language in a social setting. Hmm. So lots of different people can benefit from social language support. Cool. Get that myth out of here. Speaking baby talk will cause delayed speech. Ah uh, no, definitely not. So. This baby talk refers to the high-pitched voice that we use when we talk to little babies sometimes. And look, baby talk, it actually supports the language development. It doesn't have negative impacts because babies prefer to listen to this type of speech. The high pitch, it lets them know that we're talking to them. So then they'll tune in, it helps them pay attention to what we're saying so they can pick up new words that they hear us talking. Yeah, right. Yeah. So what do we think of this myth? I think we don't like it. <laughs> Good. Teaching a child multiple languages will hinder language development. That is no bueno. So research shows that actually a child learning another language while they're developing their first language can be quite advantageous. There's multiple cognitive domains that are improved during this process, such as identifying patterns as well as vocabulary rules, syntax, 
and different forms of intonation and tone. And children learning another language will actually go through a similar uh, level of language development with both languages around the same time as a typically monolingual child. So that myth, it's a buster Rooney. Thanks for having us this spa week. I've been Sophie, this has been Darcy. I still am. And thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any other myths relating to speech pathology or any allied health, please drop them down in the comments below. Thanks so much and happy spa week, everyone. See ya.